In this video, we're going to learn how to estimate the necessary sample size to reach a desired confidence level when you've already determined your margin of error. I have the formulas right here that I cut from the larger reference sheet for hypothesis tests and confidence intervals. So all the formulas are summarized here and down at the bottom are the formulas for sample size. And we're doing one for a mean in the example we're about to work. So we'll be using these formulas. If you were doing one for a proportion, you would be using one of these two. Uh, this one, if you know your P, and this one, if you don't, you assume 0.5 for both your P and your Q. So let's get started with reading our problem and figuring out how to use this formula from the information given. So it says you want to obtain a sample to estimate a population mean. Based on previous evidence, you believe the population standard deviation is approximately 48.6. You would like to be 90% confident that your estimate is within 0.1 of the true population mean. How large of a sample size is required? So let's start to organize this information and we'll also use the formula as a guide. So notice that the formula requires a critical value, a standard deviation, and a margin of error. The critical value is a z-score, and for z-scores, we need an area so that we can find the corresponding z-score boundary. And the area we're going to use is going to come from our confidence level. So they said 90% confident. So I'm going to put 0.9, 90% as a decimal. Alpha is your significance level, or 1 minus the confidence level. So that would be the area in your two outer tails. The confidence level is the area in the middle, in between the two critical values. So in the tails, I have a total of 0.1 area. And in each tail, I have half of that. So using this left area, I can use norm.inverse to find my z-score using the 0 0.05 comma mean of zero for standard uh, mean of zero for z scores standard deviation one always for z scores now i would like that to be positive just because with confidence intervals we use positive critical values even though in this case it won't matter because i'm going to be squaring everything if you are doing confidence intervals like if you're constructing a confidence interval using a calculated margin of error. When you calculate your margin of error, make sure to always use a positive critical value. Next, we can find the sigma given here, 48.6. And the margin of error was that we want to be within 0.1 of the true population mean. And so now we're ready to calculate the sample size that we need. So we're going to use uh, this version here where you first do the fraction and then square the whole thing. So I'm going to enclose this in parentheses and raise it to the power of 2. So now inside, I'm going to do my critical value times my standard deviation and then divide by my margin of error. So I can just click on those values that I have in my cells, or you can type them in by hand. So critical value times standard deviation divided by margin of error. And that whole quantity is raised to the power of 2. So now, notice that we have a decimal answer here. So it says 639, 38 and a half pieces of data are needed. Well, that doesn't make sense. We can't collect half a piece of data. So let's round it up. We always round it up because we are going to just collect a little bit extra. That's all. That's, that's what we need. This is the minimum amount because if we were to collect uh, 639 and 38, that would be too few. So round it up every time. Okay, now that is the answer that I'm getting. However, if we put that in, we're going to get the wrong answer, and that's because there's a note down here 
to round the critical value to three decimal places. So if I just come in here and change this to 1.645 rounded to three decimal places, my answer is different. And I can see that I need to still round up because I have 0.3 there at the end. So rounding this up, this would be 639152. Uh, nope, that 2 has to go up to a 3. Okay, so 639, 153 pieces of data would be needed in this case. That's a lot of data. All right, so seeing that that is the same answer there, that's the end of this example.